Well, at 6 30, we have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer, is Mr. Gelinas. All set, Bill? Yep, all set. Okay. So um, uh, we're here just uh, requesting um, a lot release for lot eight on Colony Estates. Um, I believe uh, what the plan we had for this was um, waiting to do the top coat on the road just uh, because not enough is developed yet in terms of houses built. I think um, lot two is built. Lot four <clears throat> was sold to a private buyer who has uh, not done anything with it yet, but I'm told that it's going on the market um, because they bought a house on Indian pipe, I guess. Lot six is under construction today. Lot eight is the requested release. Lot seven being the end lot has been sold to a private buyer. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna go back forward then. So lot five is still available. Lot three has a home that's constructed and completed. And lot one has a cleared lot uh, with likely a spec house being built on that one. So currently today we have lot five and lot eight um, um, secured. What we were looking to do is we have a buyer for lot eight um, we, we reached out to Carl's Excavating and asked them if they could update a recent quote for the um, top coating of the road. They've done that. And then uh, we proposed putting one and a half times that um, in an account or, or at the discretion of the town where they'd like that held uh, for, that, for that work to be completed. So that's the request we have today. Lot five is still um, held as well. So when we approved the subdivision, we said that uh, in this case, two lots would be held um, so that um, one lot is security for the subdivision, one lot is security for the uh, inclusionary zoning. Um, so lot five will remain uh, as the inclusionary zoning and the cash deposit will replace lot eight. Uh, yes, and I think for inclusionary, we're, we're just waiting to see um, what the town is, is intending to do there. However, uh, if you recall back when we did this approval, we had also proposed um, a unit on uh, Middle Street that we have uh, to bring into that um, as an affordable housing unit. So. We might pursue that route depending on what the town's uh, final plan is for the uh, the, the cash in lieu of. Okay. So the lot five that we're holding, Peter, that is the one that could be an affordable housing lot right there. Um, I suppose lot five could be an affordable housing lot, um, I, as I understand it, or or we propose another unit in town. That's well. Understandable. Okay, yeah. and the uh, so it'll be lot five plus uh, a a amount of money and uh, what proposed amount of money and how will that be handled? And uh, I suppose the treasurer would like to have something to say about it as well. So you know, it could be a passbook. It could be a security bond. It could be gold bullion. Uh, Bitcoin. Oh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. <laughs> um, so j just to give you kind of the rounded numbers, Carl's came in, we, we had them update the quote from last year, it came in about 10,000 higher uh, inflation, apparently. So um, we're around, I believe it was 42 to 45,000 to complete that. So we did one and a half times um, that number, which would be somewhere around the 65, 67,000 range. Um, and I'm open to however the town, I can, I can have our attorney hold it in escrow. We can put it in an account somewhere. We can give it to the town to hold. Um, I, you know, that that's any way is fine, fine by me for that. Okay. Bill, do you have, uh, I remember there was some discussion of what was a little bit more convenient for the town treasurer to handle. Do you, do you recall, or Jim, do you recall how we're going to handle that? It hasn't come up recently. Okay. So um, uh, Connie um, wanted to hold it just in the name of the town 
and uh, not hold this, a passbook for the um, developer. Uh, but um, I'm sure we can work something out. Yeah. Why can't it be held similar to what was done over here at East Street Commons? When the lawyer just holds it for the benefit of the town. The, um, the general laws talk about a deposit of money uh, for negotiable securities as uh, one of the forms. Okay. Well, I think it would be possible if the town preferred too that I could deposit it with a bank and have them do a letter as well. Um, I think that might be an option if that was easier for the town, just putting that out there too. Yeah, that was one of the options we did use okay. once upon a time. But we have to be careful that one time the uh, bank did give a, a, a kind of a letter of credit, but uh, it expired once too. So how do we keep track of that? Cash. I would put it in an account and have it held for that purpose solely. Okay. I see no objection. So we have one lot plus the... Uh, approximately 67,000 for the final cope. Anybody else have any opinions, Jim? Whatever is acceptable to the, to the treasurer is, yep. is good with me. I'm not gonna get involved in the finances. Yeah, I, Put my two cents in finances. Yeah. So I, I'm not participating in this one. So if someone can make a motion to release lot eight. I'll make a motion to release lot eight uh, subject to, uh, what's what's the exact number, Peter? Do you have an exact number? Um, yeah, I just sent something around. Okay, let me let me just I can pull it up just so we know the exact number here. Just to make that just make the number part of the motion. That's all. Um, Sixty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-three dollars. Okay. In a, in a form acceptable to the town treasurer. And we're still going to hold lots. We don't even have to mention lot five. And that will be released once he puts the final code on. Is that the way it goes? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, what about, do we have all the paperwork to accept this as a town way? I think what the release wouldn't be until we did the top coat. And then once the top coat's done, they would do a final as built, I believe. Well, is this okay. under the new uh, subdivision regulations? If it's under the new subdivision regulations, they'll have to be accepted by the town before the last lot is released. So we're holding that lot five. Well, no, no, no. That would, the, 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 the lot five is the inclusionary zoning. The money would be the one that we're going to hold. But if we have, so if this is under the new subdivision regulation, where we can't release. No, that, that's no. It it doesn't read that way. It's. No. Um, I don't think that's it, Joe. What what he has done in this case was upfront agreed to apply to, to apply to have it accepted by town meeting, right? And filed a legal description of the road right that's what i thought they got it we have to have all the paperwork to accept it as a town way as built final code etc 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 if the town doesn't accept it but we have all the appropriate paperwork we can still release the lot i mean if the town doesn't accept it then he's the the the, the, the uh, subdivision is responsible for everything else but we can release that lot. What's to prevent him from just walking away from it like the uh, waste subdivision next next door to him? Because we're not going to release that last, we're not going to release the $67,000 till we have everything that's needed to okay. accept okay. it as a town way. That's, that's acceptable. I understand now. Okay. Okay. So you have a motion. You need a second. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passes 4-0 with one abstention of Mr. Dwyer. Thank you. Is Mark on, first of all? I am. Oh, um, okay. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to make sure. Yep. Okay. Okay, next up we have Mr. Iser. Good evening, gentlemen. I Good think evening. I have sent you two items to discuss this evening. One is 26 Russell Street, and I'd like to do that first, please. I think I sent you a plan, did I not, Bill? I think you yes. did. Uh, this one that backs up to the rail trail? Yeah, this was, it's what's called Easy Ride. Uh, the owners got uh, approval five years ago, probably to sell used motorcycles there. And they've decided that they don't wanna sell used motorcycles anymore. They would rather concentrate on cars. So if I'll wait for Bill to uh, try to get the plan up. So it's, it's just basically a numbers game. Um, what I'm gonna ask for is to number one, get rid of the motorcycles, which takes up so many square feet. And then I have excess parking in the original plan, which will give us a few more square feet for some additional cars. Okay, let's see if I can fit this. Okay. Okay. So if you can somehow get the bottom is more important, Bill, than the top. I don't know if you can manipulate it on the screen. There you go. Yeah. Right there. That's beautiful. Okay. So if you look at the parking required table, uh, we have uh, we got approved space for five motorcycles and five automobiles. We want to take away the five motorcycles, which will give us 300 square feet, which is enough for two cars. So we're going to, we would like to exchange the ability to have five motorcycles on the site for two cars in that line. And then if you look at the uh, table above parking required, it says parking required and provided. So the, dis the difference between required and provided is 624 square feet and three more cars would be 450 square feet. So what I'm asking is just, again, it's a numbers game to do away with the motorcycles and allow five cars in their place knowing that we have all the okay. square footage required for those five cars. Okay, so you want a total of 10 automobiles when you're done? Correct. Okay. Where, where does the, the tenants park for the house? They're on the side of the house, uh, the west side of the house, Joe. West? Yeah, in the west side, so towards, towards the Northampton. There's yep. four spaces there, but they the the tenants currently are the owners. So there's two two people that uh, park there. Is this what you're referring to is the tenant space? Yes, but two of those, not all of them. Okay. And there are ten additional spaces shown. I know there's twelve additional spaces. No, there's sixteen additional spaces shown. So there's plenty of space to park the ten cars. Uh, there was there was some question about the second story of that building. Uh, did we allow it just for storage only, or was it is it now included as office potential office rental? It's now included as potential office. We we went through that uh, and got that all approved. If you look on this plan, you'll see that I've got the second story, uh, a two story building, bottom floor, top floor, square footages, and that's. I got in the you. calculation for the parking required. 
And basically what these guys are looking for is they, they have nobody in the building right now. They're looking for low impact tenants like an attorney or an accountant or something like that, which isn't going to require a bunch of parking. But we do have the parking that's required under the bylaw. Okay. Any other discussion? Yeah. Is this, uh, is this uh, class one or class two license that will be there? Two. No class one potential. Mm -hmm. No, sir. It's too close to Ex the I, uh, country, I, I, whatever it's called, country Nissan. Too, too, right. close and, too close and too small for class one. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Entertain a motion? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to uh, waive further site plan approval. Um, for auto sales not to exceed 10 vehicles. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Yeah, sign it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Did we hear Mr. Zukrodnik's question about signage? There's a sign there already. Oh. There's an existing sign there and just I want so the board knows this also after you guys are done here we have to go to the select board to get the uh, increase in the license. Okay. Just so you guys are aware. So no change in signage then I am a positive vote. So I think Randy, Randy makes a good point to the new members on the board uh, used to be sometimes people would try to circumvent the site plan by going to the select board first and getting more than the allowable uh, spaces. And then we were caught in the dilemma. So, uh, but this is the proper way to do it, Randy. Thank you. You're welcome. Any opposed to the motion? Motion passes unanimously, 5-0. Thank you on that one, gentlemen. Item number two, 123 Russell Street which is the property just west of the Hopkins Academy Administration Building, uh, owned by Rolf Goff and his wife, That's Susan. Here we grow. Hmm. Yes. It's, Are they direct it. descendants? Pardon me? Are they direct descendants? Or I is it G-O-F-F? It's G-O-F-F. Okay. Uh, Bill, I think there's a plan with that yes and and what i'm asking i we have to uh mr goff would like to add a garage to the property and i have to apply for site plan review so that's what i'm here to, to do this evening if you guys would please tell me how i can find the application online i would fill it out and get it to you so, Randy, can you uh, map it out? Is that's the one that is closest to Route Nine, and there's another lot available to the to the north, correct? Mm. Or is that just one lot? It's one lot, and did we it, you, subdivide it? You know where we're. Pardon? Did we not subdivide it, or or no? We... This is too small to subdivide. Okay. This is on the south side of Route 9, so it's on the Hopkins side. And oh, it's on the Hopkins side. Okay, I'm... Yeah, and the, 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 the school administration building is right next door to this, where it says That's Town it. of Hadley. That's the school administration building. And then Hopkins, the Hopkins property wraps around the back side of this Okay, property. so this is the guy with the, uh, the trucks and the lips? Yes. Okay. So is that going to continue and you're adding more to it? No, this is for the, uh, the guy who, who is, is renting. There's a commercial rental on the backside of the existing building. And Mark knows what it's called. I don't know what it is. Something grow. Here we grow. Here we grow. And it's basically hydroponic Hydroponics, yeah. growing and from what I understand, the way things are going with the supply chain and stuff, he used to be able to 
order two or three items, no problem. Now it's you order a truckload or you get nothing and he's got no place to put it. So that's the, the uh, uh, intended purpose for this garage is to store stuff for, for here we grow. And again, it's got it's subject to site plan review. So I tonight I'm applying, or at least putting you on notice that I'm applying. And again, I can't find the form online. So once I get that, I'll get it to Jimmy, and off we go. Okay, and you have the uh, mailing labels for the abutters. I do. Okay, those are ready to go. You should have the form on your email, Randy. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, when you I do will that, get it, I'll fill it out tomorrow, Jimmy, and I'll get a hold of you and get it to you. Okay. All right. There, when you do submit that, there will be an elevation or elevations of the of the proposed garage. Uh, I hadn't thought about that, but if you want that, I guess we better find one. Just wondering how high, how you know. What's it going to look like? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, he's, he's getting it from somewhere. I don't think it's going to be stick built from what I understand, but I will find out what I can and get to whatever is available. Okay. This, uh, is this floodplain area, Larry? Uh, Randy, do you know? Um, I don't believe, but I'm not sure, Joe. I guess Maybe. I better look into that too. Because the uh, certainly it did flood in the 38 flood, but the uh, the flood control dams up north have mitigated the, the level of potential flooding for the 100 year flood down. Yeah. So uh, I know it extends to just about where the church is or half that lot where the uh, courthouse is. Yeah. All right. Are we going will... to require a request a cupola in honor of John Devine? <laughs> Randy, I don't think that it, it's not long enough. If you could get me the form and just email it to me before I yep. sign it, I'll because what I wanted, what I've been doing lately, because the the prices of advertising are so all over the place for the legal ad. Yep. I'll get I'll get a price of the legal ad, and then I'll give you a price for the apple for the for, for the application fee, because I mean our standard fee is three seventy five. Yep. However, we've been finding out lately the legal ad alone has been exceeding the application fee. Okay. All right. That oh. sounds reasonable. I will fill it out, email it to you, and wait to hear back. Okay. So do you have the ability to tell me when this meeting could happen? Should be able to happen in one month from today. Because once I get the form... Yeah. Usually when I send the the legal notice to the Gazette, they send me a proof with an invoice the same day. Okay. Okay. Or maybe the next day. So it's it's quick. Okay. All right. So once you get all that figured out, then you'll tell me when I when the hearing will be. That's correct. Okay. All right. I would anticipate. What's today? The fifth. I would anticipate. Uh, what you will call it? Um, May third. May third. Yeah. May third. Okay. All right. Yeah, the worst that's, case, well, it's either going to be May 3rd or May 17th. May 17th, election day. Oh, can't do it then. Okay, so we'll, we'll shoot for May 3rd. All right. Sounds good. That means I got to make Town sure I get is what? Town meeting is which day? Fifth. May 5th. Okay. Thursday is the 5th. Oh, man, we got to get our legal notice in for our here for our public hearings too okay okay yeah all right so that's that and then i have one final question are you guys talking about anything that's going to be on the town meeting warrant this evening we will be talking about stuff yes okay then i'll hang around randy is the town meeting going to be indoors this year it appears that uh, it's intended to be so far and Good. unless something weird happens and we get a mad rush of uh covid case Cases, I would speculate it will be indoors. Good. Thank you, Mr. Something Moderator. Different. Oh. Okay, I'm all set for now. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, so Jim Falcone is next. Hello. You hear me, folks? Yes, we can. Okay. Just a very informal um, proposal. I'm representing FDF Realty, the uh, owners of the abandoned Rockies Project or the vacant Rock, uh, Rockies Plaza. We're just planning on updating the paint on the building, going with more subtle neutral tones. Uh, we also are thinking about subdividing the building into two parcels. Right now it's 10,000 square feet and the market is not there for a parcel that big. It's been vacant for many years, as you all know. Um, we're in touch with realtors in the area and they seem to think that two 5,000 square foot parcels will be much easier to rent than one big 10,000 square foot parcel. What's the address there? 299 Russell Street, the old Rockies Ace Hardware building. One of my favorite stores. Yeah, well, unfortunately, with Home Depot and Lowe's, the pie wasn't big enough. Got it. You know, so unfortunately, the, the family business is gone, and now we're trying to, you know, at least make some revenue from the property that's been vacant. And we think that, you know, two 5,000 square foot parcels would be much easier to rent. Well, you'll probably want to come back to us when you have uh, tenants identified. As I mentioned when we spoke on the phone, um, the planning board doesn't, as long as it is a use that is allowed by zoning, we don't uh, concern ourselves with the interior layout. That will be between you and the building department. Okay. But uh, we do like to, um, technically a change of use, uh, triggers site plan approval, but we routinely waive it if it is a um, not a significant change of use. Okay, so, I'm sure it would be retail or some boutique type shops. Uh, I did also, as I mentioned on the phone, want to run by the the painting. I'm, the current TJ's rental now is no longer a tailor rental, so the colors are red as opposed to yellow. So I'm proposing to paint the front awning red as opposed to the yellow and then the trim on the building red and i just wanted to run that by the board well that's is that a sign uh, is that a company sign is that part of the a uh so, you know is the awning part of a sign no there, there's no there's one sign on the west side of the building the awning is just an awning to keep the sun off the showroom the only comment on your property, I don't think I have a problem with the color, but the digital sign that used to be for Rockies. Right is, on, Jim. Uh, beat me to the point. It's non-conforming <laughs> use. It has been over two years, and it has to be gone. Okay. Well, I'll bring that up to the realty company. and But the square footage is still allowable as a sign. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, oh, I'll wait, mention yeah, that. Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, as far as I know, the sign doesn't function anyways. Right. So I think, I, but the, we don't want to lose the available square footage on the post. Um, I'm, how does the planning board feel about? I'm not sure if that is grandfathered. So the bylaw gives you a 64 square foot uh, pedestal sign. Do you happen to know how large it is? Uh, I don't, but. It has been up for a number of years, so I would assume it would be grandfathered. Yep. We haven't removed it, so it is, it's been in existence all this time. Whether it's electronic or stationary, it's been there. The, the sign itself, the, the size of the sign might be grandfathered. It'll have to be externally illuminated. Mm -hmm. Um, the planning board might be might be willing to wheel and deal with you. Okay. Well, I, I think lose all the internal and digital signage and just keep it external. And we we may be willing to agree that the sign size is grandfathered. That's very acceptable. What does the board feel on that one? Good, reasonable, reasonable, correct. 
Yeah, I mean, if it's or, not if it's not grossly over sixty four. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. And as far as the as far as the red the red awning, if you're if you're painting what is already painted a different color, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, it's going from yellow to red. The, the Taylor Rental, I don't know if you know any history, but Taylor Rental franchise was bought by True Value Hardware, and their colors are red. So they decided to do away with the Taylor Rental name. Not, not making me happy, but I had no choice as a franchisee. So the colors are red now. So it's kind of silly to have a yellow sign. In, I mean, a yellow, excuse me, that was a faux pas, <laughs> a yellow awning in front of a building with red colors. The red awning might look better than the yellow awning out there. I agree. <laughs> that yellow is mighty bright. <laughs> well, it'll be gone. Okay. Any other comments for Mr. Falcom? Yeah, any plans to buy any of the adjacent property to the west of it? There's that vacant lot there that's been there for quite a while. Mm, the flag lot is all wetlands and the building next to it. We, we don't have any plans at this point. So we've looked at rebuilding that, tearing down what's there and what we could put up doesn't really make sense with the new, with the new laws. So we're just going to, we're going to work with what we have and, and clean it up, make it look a lot better, and hopefully get some tenants in there and rejuvenate it. Technically, it's not a flag lot, but it is a flag lot. It's really a, a subdivision. And the, uh, the title of the subdivision road is Random Walk. Because <laughs> that's all you'll ever do on it. <laughs> no, but that used to be uh, that used to be a uh, kind of a computer uh, lingo for a while, wasn't it, Mark? No, random walk theory in the stock market well, the, is the from, stock from market. What, from, they also called it a drunken walk from day to day or minute to minute. You don't know which way it's going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, we have no we have no desires for that. Okay, now. thank you. Yeah. Did uh, anybody hear from Diane Kirby? Wasn't she supposed to be on tonight? She's supposed to be on the ZBA tonight. Oh, okay. All right, very good. Yeah, in fact, the meeting is just about going on. I think it just started. Okay, and how how would I get on to view that? Go go back to HadleyMA.org. Yeah. On the calendar that mm -hmm. is on the landing page, click on yeah. CBA. Okay. And, and you'll get their Zoom link. Okay, great. ZBA okay, is tomorrow great. night, I believe. Was that yeah, time? ZBA is, is, yeah, ZBA is tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Oh, tomorrow night? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was tonight. No, okay. Oh, that's even better. I should write this down. Uh, <laughs> 2022, Jim Max Mosky was wrong. Yeah, right. <laughs> the next I've asked him been wrong way more than just once. <laughs> and he freely admits it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, gentlemen. I think I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So I do have a Sebastian easy ride down, but is am I correct that 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 relates to uh, 26 Russell? I believe so. Okay. Okay. All righty. Like I said earlier, when we got to the, uh, we're talking about the zoning articles, we've got the one for the signs ready to go. Um, I'm working on the battery storage one. I'm ho hoping I'll have that ready, but that's turning into a bit more than I expected to put the wording together. But I may put out what I have already after this meeting so everybody can take a look at it and give me two cents for back on it. Okay. And I am working on the special permits. I'm uh, uh, cutting, cutting down what... Um, Ken had had given us some of it just 
you know, it doesn't seem to need everything. Um, we'd already talked about cutting some stuff out of it uh, the last time we met. So I'll right. likewise try to get that circulated around in the next few days. So we'll have a chance to talk about it at our meeting on the uh, 19th. Does that help you out, Randy? Uh, you have placeholders as we always call them. The select board does that. Yeah. So they should have that. If, if you guys ask for it, I'm sure it's there. Uh, we did. Uh, so uh, we, we should have uh, three, three slots reserved. Uh, we also, um, let me just make some notes here. Um, we also have should vote on the um, a recommendation on a, a Megan's Way. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. We we had an email from the acting DPW director, right? We did. He is satisfied. Yep. So, um, okay, I just sent out, sent, sent to the planning board, the rest of the planning board, what I have so far for the battery storage. Please comment and get back to me so that we can, because we got to get the legal notices in the newspaper um, for the first Tuesday in May, because the town meeting is two days later. Is it going to be in the industrial zone, Jim? Uh, the, uh, what I did was I, I, I so far, I made it like we had at the last meeting. If it's in the industrial zone, you can put battery storage in. If it's in the ag residential zone, you can put battery storage in provided 25% of the power is generated by on-site solar. Last, last two weeks ago, you're talking 50%, you changed it? I thought we said, well, again, there's nothing locked into stone here. If we wanna make it 90%, we can. Okay, so we that's why it says comment back if it should. If you want to make it 50, I'm fine with that. Let's do 50. Did, did Ken find any precedents anywhere else in the state? I didn't, he, he hasn't got back to us on that. Okay, yeah, well, he said right. that the rest of the state is wrestling with this idea. Some places have it, has it, uh, you know. With, they have no comments on it. They've been they're allowing battery storage. There's a few others that are like us. They don't allow it. And he says they're all over the place. Yeah, someplace on Route 2, I, I think it was Athol that came up with something. So we'll just have to look it up. Yeah. And, and the thing is, it's so relatively new that there's not a lot of good information out there on this. Well, as, as Bill said, they're proposing these battery storages in towns that don't come up right off the tip of the tongue. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to slip it like, by. Well, what's the, what's the uh, strategy there, I guess, is the question. But we were talking about it could be allowed in the industrial zone, right? Without, without solar, without on-site solar generation, that's correct. Right. But in the, in the other zones, they have to generate some on-site solar. Okay. I thought we said 25%, but if I make it 50 or whatever number you want to pick, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with it. But your point is a good one, Jim. Yeah, we can wrestle with the percentage because there are certain people that are gonna have, you know, a solar farm like Ule property and they are, <laughs> Right now, they are allowed to have yeah. the storage. So. so, but that was put there specifically to to store electricity from the store farm. It was from the solar farm. It wasn't put there to pull electricity from the grid and store it. That's great. Yeah, even 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 Goulet's, he's all big, but up. They're only putting in like fifty less than fifty percent of the battery power. 
for this for the on-site solar. So they're they're only they're only uh, storing a portion of what they're generating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smiling because I still think of Mark Dunn's comment. How do you separate the goat's milk from the cow's milk in this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I don't you think he saw the that one coming. It, the, way you, the way you do it is you taste the cheese. <clears throat> okay, so we got to we've got to get moving on the on the uh, zoning articles, and uh, I will post for the. Uh, public hearing for May 2nd or May 2nd or May 3rd, Bill? Uh, it is May 3rd. May 3rd. May 3rd. So I will post for that by next week. Luckily, we don't need the exact wording to put it, uh, the notices out, but we need to get the wording within a couple of days to, to, to the uh, Jessica, so anybody wants to look at it, they'll have it. And we need to get the wording into the town administrator so they can put it onto the warrant pretty soon. Right, yes, I, I'll, I will uh, get the date that uh, it goes to town council for review. Okay. So and we've, only got a, we've only got a month, so we're running up against the deadline. We gotta move on this one. I mean, the, and the one, probably the most important one is the battery storage to get that on the warrant. And I mean, if we don't have a good article, we'll do it in the fall. Yeah. Um, if we directly reply to you with our feedback, not reply all, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't count as an in-series violation of open meeting? I don't believe so. All right. Because we're not deciding, we're just giving you input. You're, 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 you're just giving two cents worth. Okay. Is that correct, Bill? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, the, um, we're taking no action. We're just circulating a draft. I'll, and I'll do the same thing. I'll send it out to everyone, but don't, don't reply all. Yeah, just reply or, to the sender. Or send it to us as uh, we're, we're all blind copied. So we can't hit, if we hit reply all, it would, wouldn't include anybody. Okay, I can try that. Either way. Okay, well, I already sent more, I already sent out the one for the uh, battery storage, but just like Bill said, just reply to the sender. Okay, what else do we have to vote on, Bill? Oh, for the- uh, 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 Megan's uh, way. So- Megan's way. I will make a motion to recommend a uh, town meeting accept Megan's way. I'll I'll second. Second it. Any other discussion? This would have been beat to death for the last three years, I think. We have no other discussion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, let's see. Adopt standard conditions for special permits. That too early to do yet, Bill? Uh, yeah, I don't have anything for that yet. Okay. Well, for I have too much for that. I have to cut it down a bit. Affordable housing trust fund updates. We, I guess that this would be part of it, would be, which is the, uh, Housing production oh, plan. Housing production plan. Dave Story will be the member from the uh, se uh, senior housing. No, what is that called, Bill? Senior? Uh, council on Aging? No. Uh, council on Aging. Council on Aging. I'm sorry, a Council on Aging. I emailed Molly. Um, if her committee has chosen those two members yet, I have not heard anything on that one. And disconnected. So, depend as soon as I get the two members from the uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee, I will set up the first meeting and let Ken know so that we can move forward and get moving on that topic. So I didn't catch the name of the Council on Aging rep 
Oh, Dave Story, S T O R E Y. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so I need to double check. I think that the it's uh, the Monday before our next meeting is the Patriots Day observation, I think. Disconnected. Although I am, uh, I'll, I'll double check on that. Yeah, it typically is the third Monday of the month. Um, so uh, if, if, if the 18th is the holiday, then we're, we're fine meeting on the 19th. I'll just have to remember to get the uh, agenda posted earlier. Okay. Um, I'm, trying, I'm gonna have to check my notes. I think we may have continued the battery storage to the uh, 19th. And I think we also have Ken coming on the 19th. Yeah, the battery storage is continued to the 19th. Okay. Just getting back to the battery storage briefly, would, would this bylaw allow larger fields in Hadley to be retrofitted and have batteries put in, i.e. the one off of uh, uh, 47 and uh, 47? I've only lived here for 70 years. Huntington. <laughs> Huntington, Huntington. That one back there, would that be allowed batteries to be put in there I have no idea how much electricity is generated from that field. The, the way the bylaw is written, they can put battery storage on those fields today, Mike. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay. The way the bylaw is written, it says it, it, it basically in you can put you can put you can put storage in if it's if it's in conjunction with existing solar. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah. So they could team up with these people if they wanted to. That is correct. Gotcha. Okay. And I wouldn't that that might be what they end up doing. Yeah. But again, that's a visit, that's a business decision they will have to make. Gotcha. I think I'm okay with the 25% on the um, generation versus storage. I mean to to you know. That's a that's got to be a decent amount of generation to, you know, if you're going to store four times that and make money off of it, you know, that that's an investment. I think that's, you know, that's just my humble opinion. So, get, Jim, the, the place that was proposed up there by the gravel bank, could they lay lines from the place on Huntington in '47? and feed the batteries, would that suffice or does it have to be in the field? Uh, is it on site? It has to be, if the way it's worded, it would have to be on the same property right. as, the, okay. as, the, as the solar generator. It doesn't say in conjunction with it, it says on site. Okay. Because otherwise you could sell off a parcel and then you'd yeah. have your, then you'd have yeah. your battery, you, yeah. you'd have, bypassed us I want to make sure so yeah the way the way the way with the way it was worded provided that a minimum of 25 percent of the storage energy is produced by on-site solar generation so no they can't lay lines i'm okay with that i don't i don't frankly have any way to analyze, analyze 50 or 25 i don't yeah i mean and, or, and we can like i said not, we, we can change that number you know, okay. The big thing is you got to generate a decent amount of on-site right. to put storage in. And if you had a five megawatt, they got to put in one and a half megawatts of solar. Right. That's still a lot of solar. Right. Or one and a quarter, whatever. That's a lot. Yeah. And I mean, I don't want to be anti-batteries. I just don't want them going in Randy's backyard, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. <laughs> Hard maybe okay, but not the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else do we have? 
I think that about covers it, Mr. Dwarf. Do you have anything else? No, I believe that uh, we are pretty well set. Uh, we did, uh, uh, Jim and I went to the finance committee oh, yeah. meeting uh, at 530 to discuss our budget. And uh, um, it looks like we have someone lined up to take over some of the file scanning. And Carolyn also said that uh, she thinks she's identified someone who could uh, step in to help with the, the minutes, um, you know, getting the, the, the paper yeah, production. Yeah, great. So um, we will see. We still have money in our budget this year, so we don't have to wait until July right. 1 to start someone. Yeah, that'll be good. And can can I ask about. a question? Sure. How many how many uh, items do you have to scan? Zero. Sure. Zero items to scan? From planning board. We, how many no. items do we have to scan or have we you, already done? You know, how many do you have? The reason I ask is I just had a company from Connecticut scan all my old plans that are not digital and they charged me a dollar a sheet to do it. And that's all size sheets. Yeah, yeah which is 24 by 36. So I just, I rolled everything up. They came, picked it up, took it away and charged me, a, I think it was a dollar three cents a piece to do it. So just so you know. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Cause we have, I would guess, several thousand sheets to scan. And some of them are the old E-size <clears throat> e sheets. Yeah. That the big 30 by 42s or something. Well, some of them are bigger than that. Yeah. Um, probably closer <clears throat> to 36 by 40. Probably closer. I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are, <clears throat> well, I don't think there's any six footed, but yeah, probably. <clears throat> Probably 55 inches to six, probably 60 inches be the biggest one. And there are some of them, the real older ones. So we do have a uh, large format scanner. Right. And um, someone who's been working in the, Terry, I think her name is, working in um, the building inspector's office has been using it to scan the uh, building inspector's large scale plans. So we effectively have a trained uh, operator and we have the equipment. There you go. The biggest deal is going to be naming the files so you can find them. Yes. Yes. I've got an idea on how to do that. Well, let um, me know, and, will you? <laughs> I like to go year. Well, and it's day. probably a bit easier for us than it would be for <laughs> you. You've got probably all kinds of names by all kinds of different stuff. Whereas we basically have plots and a developer. So if we go, let's just say pyramid. And I mean, there's only one pyramid at the town of Hadley. Right. And we could put everything that we have pretty much under that one file. And the same for a lot of the other stuff. Whereas with your stuff, you may have, well, I'll just give you my name, Max Amast. You may have 10 different plans for me that go all over the place right so it would be a whole lot more complex for you than it would be for us yeah definitely you know. Jim, uh, i know we were beating this around once before that is to kind of make a planning department that is the building inspector and the planning board so then they wouldn't have to scan their files as well as we would have to scan our files let's say for the Pyramid Mall. That's might be correct, but we have two different two different goals. They're looking for we're looking for plot plans and parking and drainage, etc. They're looking for plan details on the building. So in some cases we would have commonality between the plans, but in many cases um, they would still be unique to each department. Right. We tend to only get the site plan, landscaping, civil engineering, and building exterior. 
and then they I get mean, all the construction. I mean, this is just something to think about. And I think yeah. Mark Dunn uh, probably deals with this more often than I do, for example. Well, the, the document should follow the site. There is a, there is a lot of common commonality between the two departments. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, but there's also, I mean, a lot of what we want, the building inspector does want to see. Right. So. Yeah, right. Pardon? You said it's a busy night for you. <laughs> There's a, it was a mute that had me. Media. I just <laughs> muted Hadley Media. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hadley Party. Anything else, Randy? Nope. No, I, that's all I have on that issue. Okay. Um, let's see. I have nothing else. Anybody else have anything else? Negative. Negative. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All Second. in favor? Go ahead. Aye. 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 Meeting Aye. is history. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Randy. Tommy. And thank you, Head. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Yeah.